Segment two, Golden Black Live. Tiffany Grimes joins us. And Tiffany, uh, in a, as busy a weekend as you're going to have in Purdue sports, I think. Uh, you know, obviously the football game tonight against Oregon. You've got basketball fan day tomorrow. Volleyball Hall of Fame earlier today. Uh, nothing going on in your world, but Tiffany, welcome to the show. I know that I know that this is the highlight, as I always say, of your media career is doing Golden Black Live. But we appreciate your time. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to be back with you. Yeah, we appreciate that very much. And and obviously, um, when you have a night like today, and, and trying to keep. You, you have to be good at multitasking in your in your role, I'm sure, in terms of trying to stay focused and trying to stay, you know, you've got, you oversee as a deputy athletic director really facets in the entire department, but uh, you you oversee three teams in specific football and, and uh, women's basketball and softball. But I always ask this question to people that have gotten to your level. What has got, what skill set has gotten you uh, you know, help, makes you good at what you do and makes you be able to focus it. Is, is, is it truly one day at a time or how do you go from that standpoint? It's absolutely one day at a time. It's one day at a time. And honestly, it's working in a collaborative fashion. We have a phenomenal team of coaches and administrators within the Purdue Athletics Department, some of the best and brightest in the business. And so it's really um, refreshing and it feels great to be at a place where we're all pulling in the same direction. You know, outside of, of taking it one day at a time, I think communication is one of the biggest strategies that we try to use. There's no such thing as over communicating for us. Yeah. And in one of the challenges and you obviously one of the sports you you deal with is football and and yeah. a focus of of that not being in the same building uh, or how much is that? I mean, you, you get your 10,000 steps in. It's not that far to the Kozich. But how do you work that as a, a, as your daily touch with with that or how you administrate that program? Uh, not that it's that far away, but it's not in the same building that you are. It's not in the same building, but they see me multiple times a day. Um, you know, our staff, I think the world of them, and I think the best way to help lead and also support is to be present. Um, and so kind of the way my day is structured, you know, meetings obviously have to take place, but the staff and the student athletes know I'm a phone call away, I'm a text message away. And so if they need anything, I'm up and across the street. Um, in addition to, to those touch points, I am there every day at practice. Um, this week has been every night at practice, <laughs> yeah. um, but then also make it a point to get over there for meetings as well. So um, they're, they're stuck with me. I am there <laughs> often, yes. When you get when you have a, a, and, and and you've had a, a interesting experiences throughout your professional life, started at well you may not have just started at Purdue, but you've got a graduate degree from Purdue. You worked at your, at uh, Penn State, and uh, also obviously the NCA, Georgia Tech, and Alabama. And then that experiences that you've had winning ex, winning experiences and what's going on right now with football. You're trying to get traction and get the season turned around. I'm going to ask you first about being at the top of the heap at Alabama and, and working with Nick Saban. And what skill sets have you drawn on to work with a program that, like you said, is trying to get traction, had a good week last week, short of winning. They had a good second half, especially, but trying to imp you know, impart that wisdom, that experience to trying to get to help, help uh, Ryan Walters and company move forward in the best way it can. Right. Well, you know, the first thing I think it's making sure that you're surrounding yourself with really smart people. And first and foremost, Coach Walters is, is one of the most um, cerebral individuals I've had the pleasure of working with his intellectual horsepower. I mean, what, what he did last week at Illinois, I think that that says it all. He definitely has the capabilities and we're more than excited to watch him progress the program forward. I think when we're talking in terms of what skill set do you draw on, honestly, it goes back to the communication. Um, a saying that we have is truth and transparency. And I think when you start there, you can have some really honest conversations about what we're doing well and then what our growth opportunities are. Um, you know, building doesn't happen overnight, right? We have this beautiful new golf club and golf facility that's going up. Well, for those who are local, they know Cherry Lane has been uh, a detour and um, filled with new 
new uh, visions of the golf club every single day. And that's taken time, you know, the same way that the construction did in Ross A, the same way that the construction um, took time with our brand new beautiful basketball locker rooms with our brand new dining hall that we just opened. Building takes time. Yeah. And so, you know, again, it's about truth and transparency, having those conversations along the way, but also understanding and not wavering on what our goals and our expectations are for the program, but ensuring that our staff and more importantly, our student athletes have the support to achieve them. So truth and transparency, grace and patience, but being incredibly steadfast and persistent um, towards the end goal. Are you a rah-rah person though when someone you know suffers a tough, a tough loss in any of your sports or how do you how do you interact do you leave them their space and let them get through what they need to deal with I mean how do you administrate from that standpoint just from a personality standpoint what to, what would how would you best categorize that from you well, you know, first, I think it, you have to get to know your staff and you have to get yeah. to know your student athletes to understand what they need in that moment. Um, I can definitely be a rah-rah if need be. But, you know, I, again, I, I honestly, I can't waver from the truth and transparency and the belief that I have in the individuals within our programs. Um, and so what I like to do is just consistently remind everybody that there's a blueprint and there's a process we are building and building doesn't happen overnight. Um, but by gosh, you know, when, when that house is finished and it's been done with intentionality and with attention to detail, that's something that's going to last for a really long time. We're not trying to throw something up and hope that it sticks for three months. Yeah. When you look at the wonderful world of social media and its impact, not only on coaches, but student athletes and all that, what's your message? Again, you know, you talk about the truth and transparency, and that's a very important. But that how do you how do you you focus ferret out the noise? But also when you talk to your student athletes in the sports that you deal with and throughout the entire department, what what's your message to them in terms of staying staying uh, focused as they move along and dealing with the that those the distractions sometimes sometimes very difficult things that come up on social media. Absolutely, Alan. I think that's probably the hardest part for me um, is to see some of the things that have been written about our student athletes. You know, they are someone's son, someone's yeah. brother, um, someone's cousin, and someone's friend. And so, you know, I, I tend to get a little mama bear when I do things like that because you know their parents and their loved ones entrust us to take care of them during their time here at Purdue and they are 18 to 22 year old young people with their adults with training wheels on and it's our responsibility to help them progress into um, amazing citizens that go out into the world and be successful and so I think you know when when we get the luxury and the liberty to turn our TVs on on Saturdays and we're watching a game, it's easy to disconnect the performance from the person. And so we, we do a lot of talking about we know who they are, they know who they are, and they are more than a game. And win or lose on Saturday, we're still going to show up the next day and we're going to love them and we're going to pump them up and we're going to have them ready for the next week. Now, obviously, the goal is to win. And, and that's their goal above all. But at the end of the day, they're people and life is going to ebb and flow. This is a wonderful exercise in how to deal with adversity um, and how to keep plugging forward so yeah. that you do hit that goal. Um, you know, I'll, I'll also say this. We're very blessed to have strong resources within our department. We have a wonderful head of sports psychology, Dr. Andy Walsh. And so, you know, we, we definitely lean on him because the mental health and the well-being of our student athletes is one of our top priorities. Um, and sometimes during times like this, his services are a little more necessary, but it's another great way that Purdue shows up and supports uh, their student athletes and their holistic development. Well said. When you look at, uh, you didn't know you were on a job interview here. I feel like I'm always interviewing. Like, Tiffany, you want to tell me what she was here. But do tell, all right, so tell me what, what you know, when t I mean, in terms of the bright lights of an event, tonight's event, going to be a, a near sellout or sellout. Uh, it doesn't get any bigger, national television. But what makes, 
is that the part that that ignites you or what part of your job is really the thing that says boy this keeps me coming back for more um uh, my guess is it's not the light bright lights but uh you tell me what that is it's the student athletes yeah it's absolutely the student athletes and it's the preparation sunday through thursday um, you know, to watch them balance their schedules to, you know, take rigorous courses at one of um, one of the, the country's most high profile academic institutions. That makes me very proud. They're very, very successful students first. But then to watch them, um, you know, compartmentalize that responsibility, step into the weight room, step into the training room, step onto the practice field and prepare to the best of their abilities. That's what fuels me. That's what makes me incredibly proud is the work that they put in behind the scenes um, that many don't get to see. And, and I wish that was different. I wish everyone yeah. could see what's happening, you know, six days out of the week instead of what just occurs on Saturday. Uh, but those young men are giving everything and the coaches are working diligently to put them in the best situation possible so that the score reflects the hard work that they're putting in the rest of the week. I am so proud of these young men and so proud of the culture that has been built within the football program. I, I am positive and I am optimistic and I am excited about the future. And I'll also say this, I am so appreciative of all the fellow Boilermakers um, who understand that and who believe in it and who show up week after week and send all of the very kind emails and messages um, to pump our team up and to pump our staff up. So that doesn't go unnoticed and it's certainly not unappreciated. Yeah, and probably an important thing to sustain, staying things in good times and in challenging times. I'm sure that's the case. All right, women's basketball, you probably will have a very short night tonight and be back. Uh, uh, I've got a big day in Mackey Arena tomorrow. Katie Gerald's team will be at signing autographs. I think it starts at nine, if I'm right. And then uh, a little, uh, uh, or that's where the practice will start. Then they'll have autographs with the men's and women's teams. But talk about Katie's development. Obviously, uh, an extension on her contract. Uh, mm -hmm. Finished the season strong last year in the postseason. Challenged, uh, struggled some during the year, but to give us a little bit of evaluation of what to expect only from not only from this team, but how you like uh, Katie going about her day to day. So this working with Katie is one of the highlights of my career. And um, for those who don't know, Katie and I were here as students at Purdue yeah. together. So um, I'm two years older than her, yeah. but I remember going to plenty of games and, and watching her play. And she was something then, and she's just as ferociously competitive and positive and encouraging um, as, as a coach as she was as a player. And so this off season, the word I would describe to use, uh, to describe to describe practices over the past off season, fun, fun. These girls are having an absolute blast and they are working hard. And it's awesome to see, you know, a roster full of mini Katie Geralds. Yeah. So when I, when I interpret that, I mean, fiercely competitive, um, going to you know work hard do things the right way work on their technical skills high basketball iq and developing a high basketball iq putting in the extra work in the gym um, and having a goal to be the absolute very best this is the 50th anniversary of women's sports at purdue um, which we'll be celebrating this evening and when you think about what women's basketball means to this institution and to this state you couldn't be more proud the game of women's basketball has absolutely exploded and is getting yeah. the attention that it deserves. And we couldn't be more proud to know that the catalyst for, for the game's growth actually has some roots right here in West Lafayette. So uh, we're, we're ready to keep working, keep supporting Katie and bring that, that national prominence back to West Lafayette and women's basketball. Yeah, WNBA uh, was at the finals. Uh, unbelievable night Wednesday night. Unbelievable drama. Uh, full house. Uh, it's uh, it's it is become a thing uh, in in uh, everywhere, and that uh, obviously is uh, is a great thing for for athletics as a whole. When you look at um, the opportunity, obviously Saturday night. Uh, 
Purdue will break a record another in in terms of attendance with volleyball. Mm-hmm. And uh, though that may not be a sport you're directly involved with, but you're involved with it as a deputy and, and certainly respect what goes on there. But again, another celebration of women's athletics uh, at the highest level. And it will be the first time in the history of Mackey Arena, an all-time record in the Big Ten when yes. Purdue plays Indiana. Uh, that's got to be a special night. Uh, I know you can, you have to look down the road to about four events before you get there, but that's going to be a big one on Saturday night. We are pumped about yeah. volleyball in Mackey. And, you know, I think we have to credit Coach Shondell. You know, I'm yeah. from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and you don't grow up in the state of Indiana playing volleyball as a kid and not know the Shondell name. Yeah. So to be full circle and have an opportunity to work with Dave has been phenomenal. But the, the game in Mackey, I think, is a testament to Dave's dedication to more exposure and more growth of the sport, but also for women in sports. Um, and we couldn't be more proud of his dedication to that, like looking outside of just Purdue and thinking about what's good for the game overall. Um, and it doesn't hurt to be in the Big Ten, which is one of the most competitive volleyball conferences, arguably the most competitive yeah. volleyball conference in the country. So every night we're going to get their best competition um, and we're going to get our opponents best. So it makes for some very, very exciting competitions. Yeah, no doubt. And then you got Wisconsin coming in the following Saturday yeah. night. And, that, you know, just think about this and uh, NBC live uh, on on television Purdue would be the first time in the big Ten that a big 10 match has been on NBC and that's quite an accomplishment as well and my guess is Mackie arena will be hopping for that one I think it's going to be going to be fun to see that as well all right I have to ask you about the uh, you know you've worked with the NCA you've worked in compliance you've done all worn several different hats in your your uh, your career. How does all this? How, how does all this continue to evolve? I mean, in some ways, you look at it and say, with NIL, with transfer portal, we're in some form of chaos. But tell me that we're not, or tell me that we're that we're inching forward to some form of stabilization in the world of college athletics. Right. Well, there there are many unknowns, many yeah. unknowns, and so what we've had to get very um, sound with is patience yeah and waiting <laughs> none of us like that <laughs> <laughs> none of us do. but waiting for things to unfold yeah um what we take comfort in again is we're surrounded by incredibly intelligent people and so once we do have an understanding um and a, a directive on the new landscape have no doubt whatsoever we'll not just be able to you know succeed in this new landscape but we'll be able to thrive a lot of people have described it as chaotic and, you know, a, a ball of chaos. But honestly, you know, I think we look at it as an opportunity. It's honestly an opportunity. It could level the playing field in many ways. And we're excited to get to work to make it beneficial and advantageous for Purdue Athletics. All right. Well said. All right. We wish you well this weekend. Uh, get to sleep when you can, but enjoy it all. You know, like I said, you don't, if you don't, if you work in your business and you don't enjoy it, you're in the wrong business. So, Absolutely. Uh, and that part is uh, going to be a big deal. Purdue and Oregon tonight, uh, we got fan day for men's and women's basketball tomorrow. And of course, volleyball uh, in, in, um, Mackey, or excuse me, volleyball in Mackey Arena. That's correct. And we didn't even get to softball. We'll hit that next time. But that's also a program that uh, uh, under Coach Maggie that is uh, making some steps in the right direction. And uh, I know that uh, you're excited about that as well. So we will take a short break and talk to another busy athletics person, Chris Pelliadot, who is uh, behind the scenes in fan experience. Uh, and then some and working on uh, what will be a, a, I think, historic and or busy, busiest weekend as I can remember, at least on yeah. Friday and Saturday night. And that'll be a lot of fun. To so stay tuned for that. Tiffany, thanks again. Good luck to you. And we appreciate your time.